Hello, and thanks for joining me. My name is Dr. Peter Megdal, and this is my story of curing my heart disease. In 2010, I noticed a steep drop in my power output during races. Racing cyclists have parameters that are attached to our bikes so we can accurately measure how strong we are in training and in competitions. I was 50 years old. My coach and my friends all told me that it was because I was getting older, but I knew a 15% drop was very steep and not normal, especially in just a year. So for the next four years, I trained harder and differently, but I didn't see any improvement in my performance and got concerned, but I also got curious. So I sought medical advice. I looked for the best doctors in the area. And the one that I found was a cardiologist at Mass General Hospital. He specialized specifically in working with athletes. He suggested that I try a maximum oxygen uptake stress test, which is not normally done on the average person, but because I'm an elite athlete, he thought that this would be a good choice. As a matter of fact, in 2013, the year before, I took third in the regional time trial championships. After getting tested, my oxygen consumption was so high, my doctor thought that everything was okay even though I had a signal on my EKG that showed what's called an ST segment depression. And it had a horizontal characteristic to it, which indicated cardiac ischemia, which is also known as reduced blood flow to the heart. My doctor believed that this was an artifact and that the only way to really tell was to undergo an invasive angiogram. Now these angiograms are where they stick a wire in your artery and route it up into the heart and inject the dye and use an x-ray called the fluoroscope to image the coronary arteries to see if there is any narrowing in the arteries. Well, it just so happened that this angiogram showed that I had five significant blocks in my artery. Yes, five blocks and being an elite athlete, I didn't really notice I had a problem except for this power drop. One of these was in the LAD, also known as the Widowmaker or the left anterior descending coronary artery. And I also had a large one in my right coronary artery. I happily consented at the time, since you're conscious on the table, to have a stent put in. I wanted the problem fixed. And I wanted it fixed fast so I could get back to riding my bike. Well, after three days from the procedure, I was able to ride my bike and started training again. One reason I worked so hard after the stent was because I knew I was gonna have another exercise test in December. So I had this test done in September and I wanted to have a good outcome and see if the stent worked. Well, it turned out that in my subsequent testing that my oxygen uptake actually decreased 5%. And boy, was this disappointing. About the same time, I started reading significant literature on how to reverse heart disease. One of the books my wife gave me was from Caldwell Esselstyn called Reverse Heart Disease. I also began reading the China study by Colin Campbell. Because of my doctoral training, I understood that you couldn't believe everything you read and particularly not a popular book that was published for everybody to consume. These books, however, had very good citations, medical citations in the back. And with my training, I began to read the original scientific data. And what I found was shocking. It turned out that a low fat, whole food, plant-based diet seemed to be the really, really the only way that I could improve. So uh, it took me about five months of reading and looking at the data and, and contemplating that I didn't want to do this. And I finally decided one day um, that I wasn't going to eat meat anymore. I wasn't going to eat any animal products at all. And after all, I grew up in Texas, and Texas, everybody has a cow in their backyard, right? So uh, this was a little bit of a problem. So in March of 2015, I tapped my wife on the shoulder and I said, look, um, we're not gonna be able to eat any meat anymore because this is what's been causing my, uh, my problem. And I was pretty hungry for about two weeks until I could figure out what we could eat, essentially. I, figured it out and I started to have a lot more energy and one thing led to another. And then in the fall of 2015, which was really only about six months later, I was retested in the same lab and my VO2 max or oxygen uptake increased 15% and I won the regional time trial championships. So modifying my diet uh, seemed to help. 
and the rest is history. In 2018, I was on the podium at the national championships and missed the podium by only one spot at the world championships, taking fourth. And I set the hour record for one hour traveled on a track at just under 29 miles. So being an athlete, it's not unique to have heart disease and not being an athlete, it's also not unique to have heart disease. So I believe that everything that I experience applies or can apply to the general public. The caveat of the story is I didn't just rely on diet to help me. The link between blood cholesterol and cardiovascular disease is very strong and well established in the medical literature. As a matter of fact, it's as closely linked as bacteria is to infection or smoking is to cancer. And I'll get back to this a little bit later in some of my lectures, but there's no doubt to me that even though I had what was considered normal cholesterol, this had led to my problem. I thought I was leading a healthy lifestyle. Soon after changing my diet, my total cholesterol went from 200 to 150 and my LDL went from 140 to 100. That's a significant drop, but I decided because I knew that cholesterol was so important, I wanted to have medication added to the mix. But I started a statin and that hurt my muscles. I found out about another drug called Repatha, which is also called Evolucumab, which is called a PCSK9 inhibitor. This drug is an injectable and it attaches to a protein that allows your cholesterol to go up. So it disables that protein and enables your liver to, to be able to remove cholesterol better. So after that, my cholesterol dropped to 70 and my LDL cholesterol dropped to 20. I've had no side effects from the drug at all. At about the same time, I started up a support group in my home for other athletes who had heart disease as well, or pretty much anybody who was interested in improving their cardiovascular health through diet. I've been running the group for about three years, and in the group, we discuss diet and have a potluck dinner with low-fat foods. I give a short lecture also to the group and several of the people in the group were not candidates for cardiovascular surgery. And one person in particular had several 90% blockages in his arteries. He started with a whole food plant-based diet, was on a statin for about four months, and he had a complete resolution to his symptoms. Nobody knows what treatment is the most effective, diet or drugs. However, independently, each has been shown to have a good effect on reducing plaque in the arteries. They can either stabilize or reduce the plaque. Both of these are important to not only not having a heart attack, but to improving function. I will begin an educational series on what I did to improve my health and what the scientific literature shows about reducing plaque in the arteries that would increase the diameter of a coronary artery to give you less symptoms and better physical performance. This informational series is not intended to replace your physician's guidance or treatment. I'm not a physician. I'm gonna present the scientific literature and discuss things that have been done to benefit me. Any suggestion you might get from any of these presentations needs to be addressed with your personal health care provider. In other words, talk to your physician. I wanna convey a couple of key notes. A physician is a medical doctor who is trained to treat disease. A PhD is a person who goes through a higher education degree to learn a specific topic and do research and write a dissertation, which may or may not be medically or scientifically oriented. When I speak of cardiovascular disease, I'm specifically talking here about atherosclerotic heart disease. Atherosclerosis is also known as hardening of the arteries it's where plaque is deposited in the wall of an artery. This plaque can break off and cause a heart attack, which can either kill a person or damage part of the heart and cause disability. Ultimately, my goal is to educate by presenting unbiased scientific information through the lens of my personal experience 
as a heart disease survivor. Both of my parents and my younger brother, who was only 42 years of age, died from heart attacks. My two surviving siblings both have diabetes and my older brother has severe cardiovascular disease and is disabled from it. Everything I've done has been to save my own life. This is not an abstract concept. I didn't go to medical school to become a cardiologist and treat people with cardiovascular disease. But I also feel that you shouldn't have to get a PhD and go through what I went through to learn what I did. So here we go.